Hello, friends. My name is Cecily, and you and I are here together for the next 10 to 15-ish minutes to talk about the CASP math performance task. We're going to ask ourselves, what is it? We are going to ask ourselves, why do we care? Why do we all do this at the end of third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and 11th grade? Why? And finally, we'll end with the question, what are some things that you can do to shine on the CASP math performance task and show what you know? Okay, let's start with first things first. You may have heard the acronym CASP. Do you know what it stands for? CASP. The CA stands for California because every young person in California in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, and 11th grade at the end of the year takes this assessment. The CASP. What is an assessment? An assessment is where you ask people to show what they know. Teachers, we love assessment and that's our job, right? We like to give you things, tasks, where you can show us all of the things that you know and we can assess that. And we can also assess or look and see where there are skills or concepts that you still have yet to learn so that we know to do that. Assessment. The S is for student. It's the most important letter. It's you. And then this is one of the reasons that I love the CASP. That first P is for performance. And in this case, the performance task says, how well can you perform at explaining yourself with words and with numbers as you attack a mathematical situation? But this is why I really love the CASP. This last P, progress. And this answers the question of why we do this every year. It's so that teachers, the California Department of Education, your family, and most importantly, you know how you're doing, right? In terms of performing tasks related to reading and writing and mathematical skills. And guess what you'll be performing? The math cast performance task can really be summed up in two words. Are you ready? Explain yourself. That's it. Explain yourself. What the CASP math performance task is going to do, it's going to give you some information, short and sweet, based on a real life situation. Okay, it might be scheduling an art day. It might be painting a room. It's going to give you this information and then it's going to ask you some questions and it wants you to explain yourself. Right? It'll say use words and numbers to explain your reasoning. That's it. That is the math CASP performance task. You might be asking yourself, well, how many questions? That is a great question. If you are a student in California in grades three to seven, you get to attack between four and six problems all about this real world scenario four to six different problems. If you are in grade eight or grade 11, very similar. It's gonna be between three and five problems, okay? So if you're, if you're in grade three to seven, that's right, it'll be between four and six. Grade eight and 11, it's gonna ask you anywhere between three and five questions, but, you might ask yourself questions about what? Give me examples of these real life scenarios 
that I will be asked to think through. Here we go. Did you know that with the CASP, you can go online and they have all kinds of practice tests because one of the things I love about the CASP, they want you to know what kind of stuff you're gonna be asked to do so that you can shine. And everything that it's asking you about is stuff that you're learning throughout the year. So here are some very specific real world scenarios from performance tasks. Let's paint a room. I love this. Do you know how many rooms I've had to paint in my life? So many. Your friend Sam wants to paint her room. She wants to paint the ceiling white and the four walls purple. Good choice, Sam. Okay, you are helping Sam determine the cost and the amount of time needed to paint her room. The room is shaped like a rectangular prison with a height of eight feet, a length of 12 feet, and a width of 10 feet as shown. And then it's great, right? It gives you three more bullet points. Just so you know, the door has an area of 22 square feet. The room has two square windows and each window opening is two feet by two feet. That's it. Okay, this is an example of the short and clear information that a performance task is going to give you. And then it will ask you four to six questions about it, or three to five, if you are in grades eight or 11. I just want you to see one more, okay? Clay pottery. This is totally a real life situation that you might encounter because Lizzie and Zella are interested in making pottery. The following chart shows how much clay is needed to make different projects. This is all the information that they give you, right? This is what you work with. This is what you take notes on. And then it's going to ask you about three to six questions using this information. Explain yourself. I actually really enjoy the CASP math performance task. Something really neat I just wanna share with you. You know these three to six questions? There are essentially three different types of questions that it might ask you. What are they, you ask? Here we go. The first type of question is a plan and design type question. Again, why do I like this? Because we use the skill every day all the time. For example, it's gonna give you some information and say, create a schedule for your class to follow on art day. Teachers do this all the time. Caregivers do this all the time. It is a great skill to have. So one type of question, is plan and design something. A second type is an evaluate and recommend question. And I just think of these as the agree or disagree questions. Every practice exam online has one. Here's an example. Katie thinks there is not enough paint for the rest of the students. And it's giving you all this information in the beginning. Do you agree with Katie? Explain why or why not with words and numbers. Agree or disagree, right? You will very often see a question of this type where you've got to evaluate somebody else's solution and recommend if you think it is true or not. Finally, third category of CASP math performance task questions. <gasps> Analysis and theory. These are fun because they are what if type questions. For example, in this performance task about a recycling contest, they may say, use words and numbers to explain how the second grade class could have won the contest. These are empowering questions that say to you, hey, if you could change the numbers, if you had the power to do that, how could you get a different result? Analysis and theory. I'm 
telling you. I think that the mass math task performance task is actually fun. And just before we end with these five kind of tips that I have, I want to be honest with you. Teacher friends had asked me, Hey, Cecily, you've introduced the English language arts performance task. Can you also help us out with just breaking down the math performance task? And do you know what I said? I said, I don't know. I feel a little scared. I'm not a math person. So I wanted to share that with you because I think a lot of human beings limit ourselves, put ourselves in a box, tell ourselves that we can't do something when guess what? Can we? Yes. Did I take all of the practice performance tasks in math? Yes. Did I use all the tips I'm about to show you? Yes. And did I rock them? Yes, I did. And I actually had a good time doing it. This is what I'm telling you. The more effort you put into things, I feel like the more you get out of them, the more you enjoy it. And I discovered yes, right? I can attack anything. I just got to put in the effort and practice. I did practice over and over again. This is how I practiced. How do we attack the CASP math task? Number one, here it is. Don't give up. That's it. Just don't give up. You might get tired. You might get frustrated. You might feel like you've hit a wall. That is okay. That is normal. <sighs> Don't give up. Take a deep breath, stretch, and then think about tip two. You get yourself your best friend, scratch paper. Paper, 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 paper. Use paper. Draw on it think things through. Maybe you want to try a pie chart. Maybe you want to do like a place value thing. Maybe you want to line the numbers up. Maybe you even want to doodle while you're thinking. But let me tell you, friends, paper, 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 and taking notes is the way that I have enjoyed, attacked, and rocked the cast performance tasks, okay? Because you know how they give you that information at the beginning? Take notes on it. Write it down as a way of putting it in your brain. Use paper. Ooh, ask yourself questions. So as I was thinking through this math cast performance task, there is a great teacher named Ms. Grace Kalamanic. And she has this great thing about asking yourself questions. And I'm going to put this in the description as well. Uh, and so you can find out more about her approach. She's so great. She's like, you know what? After you get the information, ask yourself questions. For example, what can I count here, right? What different amounts do I see? Because you're not gonna give up. You're gonna figure it out. What can I count here? You can ask yourself, hey, does this problem about clay pots or art day, does it remind me of another one that I've done warm your brain up. Our brains are beautiful. They have a lot of information in them that we don't even always remember that we know. And finally, another question that she finds very helpful, if you need to get yourself started again, is there a pattern here, right? Do I notice something in these numbers that as I'm figuring out is going to help me? Asking yourself questions. So helpful. Also... Number four, I find sentence starters can really help. So I've also put some in the description. Sometimes if you feel like giving up or you're thinking, oh, I just don't know how to start. We are here to help each other out. You can always think about sentence starters. I notice that. That always helps me. What do I notice here? Um, a good, another fabulous sentence starter can be my first step is. So again, if you look in the description below, there's just some ideas of some sentence starters that can help your brain get started. And finally, lastly, 
read your answers through someone else's eyes and then hit submit. <gasps> Friends, nothing pains me more than seeing a student, they finish and I see it and I think, nope, they, they hit submit right after they've just gotten all their ideas out. Is it great to get all your ideas out? Heck yeah, especially with the help of paper. And then wait, then give yourself a high five. Then pat yourself on the back, stretch. And before you actually hit submit, just read them through. Pretend that you are a neighbor. Pretend that you are a friend, right? Pretend that you didn't write it. And then read what you wrote. Does it make sense to you? Are there any typos you could fix? Could you add a little something that would make it more clear to somebody else? And then do you know what you do? You make those changes and you hit submit, knowing that you have given it effort, love, and a whole bunch of writing out on scratch paper, okay? Show what you know, shine, and have fun.